Before I get started on my segments on audio wiring and soldering, I thought it'd be good to go through the different types of soldering irons in different price brackets and show you the ones that I like and the ones that I don't like. Obviously, I haven't gone through all the options that now exist online, but maybe these guidelines will help you choose one. These are all irons I use. I was not paid to do this or given anything for a promotion. Um, I bought these all with my own money and used them myself. There's a lot of different soldering irons on the market in a lot of different price ranges, so I just thought I'd show you a few tips here to help uh, sort of narrow it down for you. The first and most basic kind is your simple pencil soldering iron. Now, the 35 watt version of this Weller used to cover about 90% of the jobs I would do, either circuit boards or wiring, for many, many years. I would not suggest buying a pencil type soldering iron now because what's changed is we now use a different type of solder. Originally, we were using a mixture of lead and tin, and now we've gone to lead free solders for the environment. Unfortunately, the lead-free solders use a much higher melting temperature. So if you were to buy a pencil iron like this, what you would probably get is an iron that was very high temperature and it could damage your older circuit boards or your older components and it could also make wiring connectors difficult by you know, possibly melting them uh, by using too much heat. So, in general, pencil types I wouldn't buy now because of the fact that they're most likely a fixed temperature and they won't work in all applications. Which leads us to the next type of soldering iron, which is your soldering base station that you would normally use on a shop bench. Now, the advantage of this is it's got variable temperature control. A lot of them are digital now. Uh, but you can but you'll see if you look at the the LED flashing I have the temperature set low now So the iron is not sending power to the tip But as soon as I turn it up you'll see that it will start flashing or it will turn on Solid to show that it's delivering constant power and once it heats the tip to that temperature that I've set The light goes off and it's no longer applying power and as it cools down it will continue to apply power now, the advantages of these stations are they're durable, uh, they should last a long time, they can take a beating, especially if they're sitting on your shop bench, and uh, you can get spare parts for them so they can be repaired. Also, you can get, you can see here that I have a number of different size tips that I use depending on what I'm working on. If I'm working on a heavy connector or heavy gauge wire, you know, I might use this very large tip. If I'm working on something very delicate like a small circuit board, I would use one of these smaller tips. Now, I'm not as much of a Weller fan as I used to be. Uh, there, it's a good iron and it, and it works very well. I'm not sure they're made quite as well as they were before, but they're a pro iron. Um, I prefer, for this, for this type of iron, I prefer Pace. Uh, a lot of people like Heiko. Um, but it will do you right and it should last a long time. Now, this is the first iron that I'm going to show you that I suggest that you don't buy. It's a little bit deceiving. It says adjustable temperature soldering iron. But if I turn it on, what you're going to see is the heater is always on. So this dial doesn't work like the Weller. On the Weller, the way it worked, there's a temperature sensor in the tip, and when it senses the temperature is too low, it applies full power to the iron until the temperature reaches the temperature that's desired. But on this iron, what this knob does is it's actually a, it's like a light dimmer. It's, it's a variable power. And you'll see some variable power soldering irons online, and I don't recommend you buy them. And the reason is this. It can get lower temperatures and it can get higher temperatures for lead-free solder. But the problem is it can't make up when it needs power. If you set this thing at a low temperature setting, you're actually setting it at a low power setting. And what winds up happening that's very frustrating is you'll go to desolder something that's a little bit larger like a, uh, a potentiometer or a switch 
and the metal in the switch will suck all the heat out of the iron and this doesn't have the power to make up because by turning the temperature down what you're really doing is reducing the power to the iron I really don't like this I, I think it's uh, I think it's and uh, and it leads me to the next soldering iron I'll show you which is probably the one you should buy for most cases in most cases this is the soldering iron that I would recommend it's the uh, Novel Life TS100. Now on eBay, on, on Amazon, there are a lot of companies selling the TS100. What I liked about the Novel Life was that it came with, it came with a 24 volt power supply. Now the fact that it's a higher voltage than what some of the other ones are selling gives you the full 65 watts. And if you look at the specifications in the manual, it says that it will reheat faster using the full 65 watts. So this thing is just great. It's small, it's light, it's portable, it's going to fit in my bag. Um, it does a phenomenal job. Uh, the temperature is adjustable and it's a true adjustable temperature that is actually using a sensor that tells you. Uh, one disadvantage is I think the tips are a little bit expensive and I've just gotten this iron so I'm really not sure how durable it is and how long it will last. But, you know, it wasn't that much money to begin with. It's, it's a really nice, really well-made product. And this is the one that uh, I would suggest anybody purchase that's looking for a soldering iron. Again, if you're doing a lot of bench work, I would order one of the bigger base units, like I showed you, the Weller or the Pace or the Heiko. But um, for, for light work, occasional work, uh, throwing in your toolbox to do remote work, this thing is really fantastic. So next week's class is going to be on soldering. I'm going to start with audio connectors and next week will be the XLR. Uh, if you like this and you want to see more, please click subscribe and the notification bell. I've also got a Patreon in the links down below and all the irons listed in this video, there are also affiliate links below. See you next time.